In this video coming up, we're gonna talk about how do you make a swing change so it actually sticks and makes your game better. Hey everybody, Scott Oden coming at you here. Thank you so much for joining us. You just saw us go through our Building Your Swing series. So we wanna talk a little bit about a question I get a lot, which is how do I practice, or you know, more commonly it's phrased, it's not even a question, it's just a comment I hear is, oh, I don't feel like I'm getting any better with my, my game, or I don't feel like anything's changing in my swing. So I wanna go over how this whole process works. There's a little bit of a mental side to it. There is also just an idea that it does take some time. So let's talk you through the stages of what a swing change is, and hopefully this will help you understand as you're practicing what you're actually trying to get better at. Before we get to that, make sure you click that subscribe button. We've got plenty more coming up. We're gonna be doing some on course. We're gonna be doing some strategy stuff. I'm excited about that. I always love doing those videos. So we'll do that, and then we will continue with our series of short game going through our shot making as we approach the spring so don't miss out on that also give us a thumbs up if you like the videos give us a comment if you really uh, appreciate those or anything you want to learn about that really does help so we would appreciate that I would appreciate that and I appreciate all of you for tuning in it really has been a fun ride so let's get into a swing change okay so a swing change and we're gonna get a little scientific on you here today because the, there is science that goes behind this but we want to show you what's going on. And I think the key thing here to, to know is with a swing change, this is motor learning and this isn't learning, okay? There is a difference between the two things. So a lot of people will say, oh, well, like if I do like I did in school, you know, I could pick stuff up. I could do this, I could do that. Well, that's not motor learning. That is learning. That's a little bit different, but it, you'll see some similarities in how you're picking things up as you go. The biggest thing to know is the motor learning side and the, some of these movements that you do are gonna depend on your age. The younger you are, the more pliable you are. Pliable meaning you can be molded a little bit. So that's why it, being a junior, I, we're gonna work on certain things and let your swing take shape because you're gonna have a lot of the right habits. If I can give you some of the right thoughts, you're gonna have a lot of the habits in your swings really just come out naturally, which is always the best if you can think less. But as an adult or as we get older, it does get tougher because you are a little more set in your ways. We do have some mobility issues, right? Some things aren't moving the same as they used to be. Or you just had some things happen where your body is not in the, the condition it should be right now to make that move happen, but it can happen. It, it's not like it's never gonna happen. It's just going to take some time. So. Let's go through the stages and then hopefully this will all make sense for you. So the first stage when you're trying to make a swing change is we would call you, all right, you're gonna be incompetent. Incompetent just meaning you don't have the skills and you're unconscious, you're unconsciously incompetent. What does that mean? You don't have the skill and you don't know you, have, you don't have that skill. So you don't know what you don't know. And that's why you would come to a lesson. So you were saying, all right, hey, I, I'm not hitting the ball good or I wanna learn golf. What's the skill I need to fix my problem? Because I don't know what it is. So you would not know what you need to fix and you don't have any idea that that's what you need to fix. So there's nothing to do in that stage. You just go get help or come to a video and figure out what you need to work on or ask for help. So that's what you would do. Then we get into, now we're gonna work on. So you've gone to get your help, you've gone to get a lesson, you've gone and watched the video tip, you wanna implement it. Okay, there's stages. This is where you have to know what's going on. So the next one's gonna be, you are consciously incompetent. So you know what you have to do, you're conscious about it, but you aren't able to do it yet. So this is where most people get to, and I think people don't understand this stage the most, okay? you want to get to where you can make a move. So let's pick a swing flaw that I see most people have to work on. So that's gonna be early, ex early extension, right? They're getting their body to thrust into the ball a little bit. So they wanna work on getting their body to push away, not extend up into the ball. So they're gonna get here, and what that's gonna look like is, when I am consciously incompetent, I'm gonna be coming back, and I'm gonna have to make some super exaggerated, slower swings. I'm gonna have to figure out 
what's going on to make this move I want happen. So they're gonna look awkward, they're gonna be slow, you might hit really bad shots. That's okay, because again, you're incompetent at this. You're trying to gain some understanding. So you are allowed to hit bad shots. I actually kind of prefer it sometimes because that means you're exploring where you're going and you're not taking some of your athletic abilities and letting those work and make up for any deficiencies you have. So again, when we're in the you know, incompetent but we're conscious about it stage, if I'm working on, again, early extension, I'm gonna be really pushing away, getting a feel for what's going on. How does that affect the club? That's part of this whole process is you're not just working on one change, you're working on how that change affects all the other things in your swing. The golf swing is a very complicated, intricate, linked together movement. So if you're changing something, it's probably gonna affect other things that you have to tie in. So that's where you're gonna start just getting a little bit of competency about what you're doing, okay? Very exaggerated, probably slower, okay? I would recommend that, and it's a lot slower than you think. You're gonna hit the ball, you know, this is my eight iron, I might hit this 50 yards, that's fine. It's just getting a feel for how you move. You're trying to get your brain to recognize what's going on. Okay, so let's say we've done that. You're gonna spend a lot of time doing that. You're gonna spend, could take a couple weeks, months, could take a year. It just depends on where you're getting to. What's some of the feedback you're gonna to use to know, hey, I'm getting past that stage? Well, then you could use video. You could use the feedback of a coach. You could use some ball flight stuff, um, but it's probably gonna be more of a physical thing that, hey, I see that I'm doing it. So that's where that stuff would come in. And now, once you're past that stage, you're gonna move into what we would call the consciously competent. So consciously competent means, hey, you're doing it. I'm not early extending. But the only way I'm doing it is I have to think really hard about it. I'm thinking really hard about it. So what do we see? You're, you're able to make more of a full swing. You know, I can make a full, fuller swing, hit a shot, get the, get the movement pretty good. But I have to think a ton about it. Now, why is that not good? Because you're going to see that, all right, hey, I have to think entirely about that. We as human beings can only think about so much, can't think about everything, it's too hard. You then have no room left to think about strategy on the course, where's my target, any of that stuff. So you're, you're putting all your energy mentally into your golf swing. And I would say this is where most people get stuck because They'd never get past this stage because they're not thinking about where they can go and or what, you know, they think, all right, I got my swing and that's it. I've got it, it's gonna take it to the course. It's not true, you just can't think about enough to make it where you can take care of all the other parts of the game. So you get to this stage and what you're gonna realize is, okay, I gotta make sure I'm past this stage. Well, what do you do? What's some of the feedback? This, I'm starting to hit my one shot, very consistently, I'm getting a consistent ball flight. It's all matching up to what I want. And I feel like, all right, I, when I'm thinking about it, I can get the ball to do what I want, okay? That's gonna lead us to our final stage, which is unconsciously competent. So you are very competent, and this is where you would see professionals be at, high level players, people that are playing good. This is where you're gonna get to. And what it means is you're, you're not thinking about it and you're still really good at it. Okay, so let's say again, we're talking early extension. I, I can think about everything else under the sun and make a golf swing and I'm still gonna not early extend. So what would that look like is you're gonna probably do some practice that is more variable. So I might hit some draws, hit some cuts, try to hit different yardages. Maybe I just play some holes and I film myself and I see that I'm still not early extending and I'm pulling off shots that are really good. So I've moved into a point where, all right, all my energy and focus is on how I'm playing the game as I go. I can randomize my practice, hit different targets, and go from there. Now, you get your goal is to get to this point, because that's playing golf. But you gotta go through the other steps. You can't just bypass everything else. You're gonna miss a chain in the process and it's gonna fall apart. So it's really important to understand where your, your ultimate goal is to get to this where you are unconsciously competent, but 
You can't go through it and say, oh, I've got it, you know, I've done some practice swings, now I'm gonna hit a, a draw and, and to a target. It's not gonna work. That's why most people struggle to hit shots and have it work out on the golf course. So hopefully this will help you as you go through these stages and you start seeing some of the feedback we would look for. You know, again, as you're going through unconsciously competent, you'd be able to pull off a variety of shots under course-like conditions or on the course and you'd be able to do it without fail and you have a really pretty high success rate. So that would be where you're at. If you follow these stages, your swing chain is gonna stick and you're gonna see the results pull off onto the golf course. That's how we make a swing change. We gotta go through these parts. I think it's very important to understand this because a lot of people just hit shots and then hope that one thing it clicks or they wonder why, hey, I've made like 30 practice swings and hit shots and it's not there yet. Well, you haven't gone through all the stages yet. You really have to put some time and energy. This is why when you see a professional player, uh, you know, Tiger Woods was notorious for this. It would take, you know, a year, 18 months to make a swing change and lots of practice because they had to grind their way through all of these stages to get it to work where they can go and win majors, win golf tournaments at the highest level. We need to start looking through our process there. The nice part is for most of you out there, you will find that just kind of working through these stages, you don't have to get to stage four to see your scores already improve, but you still wanna keep working towards that stage four. You don't wanna forget it, cause then you'll regress back to where you were before if you don't continue the, and complete the process. So building your swing, it is a process. Something you have to go through, you gotta respect the process, but now that you hopefully know what it is and you start to understand it, when you have those frustrating times, you're not gonna be worried about it. You're like, hey, this is part of it. You're gonna see that, hey, I've got to keep going and I will get there and I'm gonna really take advantage of these changes, all the work you're putting in and see it come out on the golf course. That's our goal, help you shoot lower scores. Hopefully this helps you understand why your swing takes a change and why it takes so long. And hopefully this will help you practice better, have more fun with it, enjoy the learning process and shoot lower scores. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in. Leave us a comment, your thoughts. What's the change that you're trying to make in your swing for the winter? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to help you out with it if you need it. And thank you so much again. We'll see you in the next video.